your adventuring party enters the chamber, flickering with light from lit braziers. At the far end, you see a lick with a rapier sitting on a dace. It rises and comes towards you. What do you do? I am Torin Atkinson, your guide in the realm of Dungeons and Dragons. Pronunciation. I acknowledge that basic pronunciation uh, differs or differs between regions and that pronunciation and indeed language changes over time. So what one person might say is correct or proper, it might be different for somebody else. But I think we can agree about common pronunciation in a world where uh, a bunch of monster names are made up by some guy. Uh, and they have no historical basis, then that can get a little tricky. But I'm going to go through these alphabetically. There's no index, though, so good luck. Although I will post this on YouTube, and maybe there will be an index there. Maybe you're listening to it on YouTube right now. Congratulations. Subscribe to my channel. Oh, what are my sources? Well, I have a few. I'll reveal some of them as we go through. Cambridge Dictionary uh, provides both U.S. and U.K. pronunciation on their website. There is a YouTube channel called English Pronunciation, which includes American, British, Australian, and Welsh versions of the words that they list. Although you can tell that they are uh, robotic people and not actual people, so that might be a strike against them. Or maybe it's a strike for them. And the one YouTube channel I went to, American Pronunciation Guide, that all they do is grab other YouTube clips of people saying the word as if that is the authority. It is not. And sometimes it's not the right word. So American Pronunciation Guide, you get an F. So this will be a fun game because I myself am going to learn along with you. Let's play along, shall we? Starting with A, Aarakocra, also known as bird folk, are avian humanoids who live in high mountainous regions. They are strong flyers and capable warriors. According to ForgottenRealms.Fandom.com, they have a pronunciation, Aarakocra. I am sure that I have pronounced it Aarakocra, putting the R in the wrong place. You know, I always thought that uh, the Aarakocra came from that old nursery rhyme, that old French nursery rhyme. You know how it goes. Aarakocra, Aarakocra, Dormammu, Dormammu. But no, it actually comes from... Lawrence Schick, who wrote for the old Fiend Folio back in the day in 1981, was it? And I got on the old Facebook, and I asked Lawrence, why did he name that creature the Aarakocra? And he was kind enough to reply to me, and this is what he said. I don't know what he sounds like. I've never heard him talk, so I will assume that he sounds exactly like Morgan Freeman. I chose the name Aarakocra for two reasons. An aerial race's name would be more memorable if it had air at the beginning of it. And number two, in my callow and petty youth, I wanted a creature I'd invented to be at the head of the D&D monster alphabet. And since Asimar isn't Apimar, it still is. Moving on. This is the word you see in the player's handbook. Acolyte. Acolyte being a person assisting the celebrant in a religious service or procession, according to Oxford. In Dungeons and Dragons terms, it's usually like a, basically another word for a cultist. Acolyte in British English, acolyte. Yeah, American English is more of an acolyte, whereas the British is acolyte. You, you barely even pronounce the uh, the O in acolyte. Arcana or arcana, secrets or mysteries, according to the Oxford languages. Also, a skill in Dungeons and Dragons, the arcana skill. You come into a room and there's magical glyphs on the wall. Oh, I want to make an arcana check to see if I know what the glyphs mean. Roll d20. Arcana is not in the Cambridge Dictionary, interesting enough, although arcane is. But according to Google? Arcana. In British English. Arcana. So it's not arcana. Holy shit. I've been saying it wrong, I guess. It is not arcana. It is arcana. See, we both learned something today. Here's a fun one. Artificer or artificer? This is a fifth edition playable character class from the Eberron campaign, I think. G a gizmo type character. They make they make things. They make things with arcane power. 
But is it artificer or artificer? Or is it, oh, what's the problem, artificer? <laughs> Something you say. Uh, when an artificer uh, pulls you over for drunk driving. Well, according to Merriam-Webster, artificer or artificer are both correct. A skilled or artistic worker or craftsman. Augury. This is a spell. This is a second level spell in the divination school. By casting gem inlaid sticks, rolling dragon bones, laying out ornate cards, or employing some other divining tool, you receive an omen from an otherworldly entity about the results of a specific course of action that you plan to take within the next 30 minutes. The dungeon master chooses from the following possible omens. Wheel for good results. Woe for bad results. Wheel and woe for both or nothing. Uh, I think everyone knows how to pronounce augury, right? Am I wrong? How do you pronounce it? Let me know in the comments. Augury. Augury. In British English. Augury. Yeah, I, I, I've been putting a little bit of a g, like a augury instead of augury. Augury, 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 augury. I've been putting emphasis on the U, but maybe that's not correct. Augury. According to Wikipedia, Bahamut is a monster that lies deep below. According to Zakaria Al-Kazwini, Persian cosmographer. And he was a giant fish, I guess. But in Dungeons and Dragons, Bahamut is a powerful draconic deity. <laughs> Wait, how do you pronounce deity? Now I've forgotten. All right, well, well, we'll get to that. Anyway, he's a powerful draconic deity who has this... He's a, he's a giant dragon. He's a platinum dragon. The king of the good dragons. Okay, here's where we go to Dragon Magazine number 93. An article t called A Pronunciation Guide by Frank Mintzer. It's pronounced Bahamut or Bahamut. And yes, you can put pronounce Bahamut into, into Google and you will get American and British pronunciation. Should learn how to pronounce pronunciation. Bahamut, American. Bahamut, British. Two options there. Now, I have been pronouncing the legendary reptile reputed to be a serpent king who, in, who can cause death with a single glance. Basilisk. With a hard S. S. Basilisk. But according to Frank Menser's dragon article, it's basilisk. With like a, uh, the S is more, the first S is more like a Z. Or Z, if you're American. See, there we go. Basilisk. Yep, it's a Z. It's not an S sound. I was doing it wrong. Basilisk. Thank you, Emma saying. Now for this next one, there is a biblical source and the D&D &D source. I never really knew exactly how to say this word. I would go with behemoth, which is also a Tad song. So maybe that's maybe that has informed my pronunciation. According to Frank Menser, behemoth or behemoth. According to Cambridge Dictionary, using the definition of something that is extremely large and often extremely powerful, behemoth or behemoth for the UK. Behemoth. Pronunciation Academy says... Behemoth. Behemoth. Now, where will you find all of these monsters? Well, you'll find it in the bestiary? In the bestiary? In the Bestiariari, the Compendium of Beasts, made popular in the Middle Ages in illustrated volumes that describe various animals and even rocks. Okay, well, I didn't know that. There should be more rocks in the Monster Manual. I guess they have the Stone Golem and the, uh, oh, Golem, we'll get to that in a second, and uh, the Galabdur. Those are rock creatures. I will usually say Bestiary, but I'm pretty sure it's wrong. Let's find out. Bestiary. Bestiary according to Cambridge Dictionary. On no occasion do I see bestiary, but I do see that British has a slight difference in that it's not bestiary, but it's bestiary, as if there was no I in bestiary. Bestiary. Classic mispronunciation amongst the young Dungeons & Dragons acolytes. I use that word in a sentence. A portable heater consisting of a pan or stand for holding lighted coals. What do you call it? Well, some people call it a brazier. But it is a brazier. Brazier or brazier. Don't light your braziers on fire. Unless you're, a, you know, a feminist or 1960s feminist. B-R-A-Z-I-E-R. Brazier or brazier. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I feel like this is the word that you've all come for. I take you now to an interview or a panel with Tim Kask, TSR, the first five years, which I believe was at a GaryCon, 2016. 
the majority of the Monster Manual was created, you know, by other other people than me. The only one I created is the Boule. So I went to Gary with a bag of monsters. All those iconic early monsters were a bag of plastic monsters from Hong Kong. We call it the bullet. And the only thing it had ever done is it run down the hallway and knocked everybody off their feet a couple of times. Now, there was a lot of anti-French sentiment pervading in the United States at this point in time. We like to mod mock everything French. And so it became the boule. Someone pointed out that in French, uh, spelled the way it is, B-U-L-E-T-T-E, -T -T -E, that you would actually pronounce the T. The it would be a boulette. The correct spelling for boule would be B-U-L-L-E-T, like ballet. Anyway, there you have it, boule. Moving on. In Greek mythology, this is a monstrous, fire-breathing hybrid creature composed of different animal parts uh, with a lion, a goat, and a snake's head. Scary stuff. Also known as, uh, in science, a single organism that's made up of cells from two or more individuals. Uh, this is spelled C-H-I-M-E-R-A. I would pronounce it chimera. I would not pronounce it chimera. And Cambridge Dictionary pronounces it thusly. In British? Chimera. And in American? Chimera. Now, who knows what polysaccharide that is a tough, protective, semi-transparent substance and is the principal component of arthropod exoskeletons and the cell walls of certain fungi. This is chitin. Chitin. C-H-I-T-I-N. So if you're fighting your, I don't know, what are you fighting that has, a, oh, you know, I bet you an umber hulk. An umber hulk would have a chitinous exoskeleton. I hear it pronounced chitin and chitinous all the time on D&D uh, &D YouTube channels. And hey, that's great for them. That is not correct. Chitin. Now, you guys remember the uh, the chicken that turns you to stone in the old monster manual? Is it cockatrice or cockatrice? I probably said both. Let's see which is preferred. Cockatrice. In British English, cockatrice. Cockatrice. The final blow or shot given to kill a wounded person or animal, often pronounced coup de gras. That's how I used to pronounce it until I heard this. How do you go about pronouncing this in French with the typical French pronunciation as well as in English or American? Coup de grâce. Coup de grâce. In French, coup de grâce. Yes, you do pronounce the S at the end of coup de grâce. Or sorry, the C-E. Now, a raised platform in a large room or hall that people stand on when speaking to an audience or performing. You might call it a stage. Other people might call it a dais. Dais. Yes, I call it dais. Deus. But could you also say dais? I think dais is most common. I do get dais on the for the British pronunciation only on the Google pronunciation. So uh, hey, British people, what's up with that? True or not true? Bullshit or not? Dais. Okay, now we come back to deity. I would say deity lately. Although when I first got my copy of Deities and Demigods, as I called it back in 1980. <laughs> It was deities and demigods. So is it deity or is it deity? Is it deity? Deity, deity. Okay, well, let's put this deity to bed, shall we? In American English, deity. In British English, deity. In Australian English, deity. Well, I guess it's both, friends. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the Dark Elves and the star of the Dark Elves, Driz Dorden, as I call him. But what does R.A. Salvatore, the creator of Driz Dorden, what does he call it? I says, yeah, we'll do a drow ranger. That'll be cool. After a while, Mary says, well, all right, since it's just a sidekick character, I'll let you get away with it. What's his name? And I thought for about two seconds, and I just blurred it out. Driz Dorden of Dermon the Shesbron on the Ninth House of Menzo Baranzan. Well, there you have it. He, it sounds like he kind of put a, a, puts a bit of a D sound in Driz. I would say Drizzed. But it sounds like he's saying Dridst. Dridst the Warden. Dridst the Warden. And he does say Drow and not Dro. Although in Dragon 93, Frank Messer says either is fine. Drow or Dro. Take your pick. You can fight about it at your Dungeons and Dragons table. And fun fact, the origin of the word Drow comes from a malignant or mischievous fairy or spirit in the folkloric traditions of the Orkney and Shetland Islands. Trows. T-R-O-W. Now in the Forgotten Realms, there is a race of dwarves. I'm sure they were often at war with the Dark Elves, the Drow. These dwarves, also called Underdwarves or Grey Dwarves, I would call them 
Durgar, but maybe you call them Dwergar. D-U-E-R-G-A-R. Checking with ForgottenRealms.Fandom.com website, I see Dwergar or Dwergar. I see them both. Moving on to F, a reclusive race of giant kin in the Forgotten Realms who prefer to avoid contact with other sentient races. They are spelled F-I-R-B-O-L-G, and they are pronounced Fearbolg, according to ForgottenRealmsFandom.com, and pronounced Fearbolg by Frank Mentzer in the uh, Dragon Article number whatever it was, 93. So there you go, Fearbolg. Say it with confidence, friends. This next one, pretty straightforward, but uh, I read somewhere that uh, somebody thought it was pronounced Gaseous. But if something is relating to or having the characteristics of a gas, like gaseous cloud, the spell, then you could say gaseous, you could say gaseous. You could put the uh, hard S or an SH. Both of those are okay. Or if you're British, you could say gaseous. Gaseous, American gaseous or gaseous. Something I just learned. In Dungeons & Dragons, there is a 5th level spell. You place a magical command on a creature that you can see within range, forcing it to carry out some service or refrain from some action or course of activity as you decide. This comes from the School of Enchantment. It is spelled G-E-A-S, and it is pronounced... Gish. Gish. Yeah, (laughs) that's a bit of a tricky one. Gish. I believe it is a Gaelic. It is not pronounced Gis or Gis or Gis. Or gayas is pronounced gish. Now, is it the gibbering mouther or the gibbering mouther? This is the old gif jif argument for the D and D nerds. Because <laughs> if someone's speaking gibberish, they're not speaking gibberish; they're speaking gibberish. So it's probably a gibbering mouther. Survey says gibbering. Ganol is the incorrect way of saying the word that means the evil hyena men. Apparently. They were a combination of gnome and troll, according to Wikifur, the furry encyclopedia. I don't know if that's true. Also, I'm not sure I like the picture that they've got for Noel. (laughs) But I also found on Wordnik, according to a brief history of known by Paul Haney, they were created by Lord Dunsany in How Noth Would Have Practiced His Art Upon the Gnolls, G-N-O-L-E-S. Just an evil dog-like humanoid found in various forms in fantasy literature and video games. I wonder if it is... uh... Maybe I have to do a whole episode on the origin of uh, Dungeons & Dragons terminology. But not right now. We're going to go with Noel until somebody proves me otherwise. With more convincing evidence than just, oh, that's the way I always said it. Now, Gollum is a creature from Lord of the Rings. But a clay figure brought to life by magic in Jewish legend, or generally speaking, an automaton or robot, or in Dungeons and Dragons, any number of artificial creatures brought to life, that is a golem. Golem. A textbook of magic, typically including instructions on how to create magical objects like talismans and amulets, spelled G I R M O I R E, grimoire. That is a French word. Grimoire, not Grimoire. Grimoire or Grimoire. In the world of pole arms, I have heard the word halberd mispronounced as halberd, as in Hal ate a piece of bread. But it is halberd. So that's fun. In Greek mythology, the fluid that flows like blood in the veins of the gods, or also known as a watery discharge from a wound, spelled I C H O R, is pronounced. Icor. Icor. In British English. Ica. Ica. Okay, I may have overemphasized the or part of Icor. It should just be Icor. Pardon me. <laughs> this one's an easy one, I think. Infravision. I wrote it down because I saw some comments on the old internet. More than one person pronouncing it infrasion. <laughs> I get a kick out of that. Infravision. Infra meaning, uh, you know, what does infra mean? It means above or below. No, ultra is below. Infra is above. Let's find out. Let's Google that real quick. Below. Infra is below. I had it backwards. Just like ultrasound and infrasound. Is there infrasound? Yes, it must be infrasound. Infrared, ultraviolet, that kind of stuff. I am not going to do exitza chittle. <laughs> I'm just going to skip that one altogether. Check out Dungeon Magazine 93 for that one. Okay, Kraken or Kraken? Which one do you release? Let's check the movie. 
There's Liam Neeson in his shiny, shiny armor. Release the Kraken! Well, Liam Neeson says Kraken, and I say Kraken. I'm sure I've said Kraken from time to time. Cambridge Dictionary. You're not in, it's not in, it's not. Kraken is not in Cambridge Dictionary. But luckily, we have English Pronunciations Web YouTube channel. Kraken. In British English. Kraken. Yeah, it's Kraken all the way down. Okay, so the elder evil uh, god, demigod, also known as the worm that walks, spelt K-Y-U-S-S. I always pronounced it Caius, and I believe that's how you pronounce the band, Caius, that got its name from that. Uh, this was uh, Josh Holmes' band before he started the um, Queens of the Stone Age. He was in a band called Caius. Hi, I'm Brant Bjork from Caius Lives. But according to Forgotten Realms Wiki, it is... Kius, uh, and that lines up with the Dragon Magazine number 93 as well. Kius, uh, emphasis on the second syllable, Kius. I had no idea. Another hotly contested item comes from Old English word meaning body or corpse is lich. This is my preferred pronunciation. A lot of people on the old internet say, are you sure it's not pronounced lick or leech? According to Frank Menser's Dragon article, you can pronounce it lich or lick. Seems a little bit weird, but okay. There is a YouTube channel called Stardusk LP, and uh, this fellow has done a 10 minute long video on the pronunciation of the word lich. He seems to know what he's talking about. Pronunciation of the word lich by Stardusk LP. 6.13k subscribers. Good work. I only have three. So lich, lick, both of those are fine. Now, if you're playing a bard character in Dungeons and Dragons, you may have a small U-shaped harp Spelled L-Y-R-E. That's not how you spell harp. That's how you spell the word. Liar. Liar. In British English. Liar. Liar, liar. Pants on fire. The etymology of this next word comes from a French word from the 1640s, a con meaning a confused conflict among many persons. And the pronunciation of this word is... Melee. Melee. In British English. Melee. Melee. In Australian English, melee. It's not mealy, Warren. I'm looking at you. I've also heard it as melee, as in, eh, it's melee. <laughs> I think if you put the emphasis on uh, the second syllable, melee, I think that's okay. But maybe that's only if you're French. Hey, somebody who's French, who's actually French, tell me if I'm full of shit. But for this next creature from the Monster Manual, a classic. I always pronounced it Otiug. But I believe that that is mistaken. I believe I am incorrect. Because according to Frank Menser's Dragon article from Dragon number 93, it is Otiug. Strangely, this next uh, character class, uh, I've heard people saying online they pronounced it Paladine and Paladine. It is Paladin. I think pretty squarely across the board, it's Paladin. Now this next one, I am not even sure how to pronounce it. I actually don't have a clue. Although it's a fairly common word amongst uh, rock climbers, I guess. P-I-T-O-N. Google says piton. British. American. Piton. This is what you use to uh, secure your ropes when you need to cross a, a chasm. No, a chasm. When you're dungeoneering in caves and caverns just before the sturges attack and suck all the blood out of you. You're going to want to make sure your rope is secured to your piton. I guess it's French. All right, Piton. I guess it's French. Thanks, EmmaSaying.com. It's a metal spike. It usually has like a loop at the end so you can put your rope through. Anyway, that's Piton. Piton. And now we come to the word that not only means producing something from nothing in a uh, stage magician sense, but, al shinch, but also the zero level cantrip, prestidigitation. That's a mouthful, isn't it, kids? I think it helps if you remember the digit means fingers and presta. Uh, yeah, the conjurer's word, the Italian presto, which means quickly. Presto. Presto digitation. Huh? Yeah, so just say presto digitation and uh, then it'll be easier to say presto digitation. Presto digitation. All right, this next unfortunate sounding word. This is a thin, light, sharp pointed sword used for thrusting, often carried by bards and elves, I guess. I don't know. It is not rapier. It is rapier. 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 This next entry comes from the Monster Manual. It is an aquatic monster. S-A-H-U-A-G-I-N. 
According to Frank Mentzer's Dragon article, it is Sahuagin. Sahuagin. I probably have pronounced it Sahuagin, but it's just Sahuagin. Now, as I was researching this, I thought to myself, where does the name Sahuagin come from? I didn't see any instances of it prior to Dungeons and Dragons. And so what did I do? Well, I went to the source, Stephen R. Marsh, the creator of the Sahuagin and the Exits um, Kittle. And he was kind enough to reply to me that he took it from the name of a Spanish historian, of all things, by the name of Bernardino de Sagún. There is quite an extensive article on the Sawagan and Ixixatl, Ixix, Ixit, Ixitzakitl, Ixitzakitl on nworld.org, which uh, you can look it up. It's by Echo Hawk from January 11th, 2016, the Monster Encyclopedia series of articles. Goes into some of the history of these creatures. Fascinating, fascinating stuff. Speaking of swords... Now, I thought I was saying this uh, sword correctly when I said scimitar, but it's not scimitar, and it's not scimitar, it's scimitar. Scimitar. In British English, scimitar. In Australian English, scimitar. It's not an A-R sound, it's more like a er, scimitar, although scimitar sounds cooler because it's like, maybe scimitar is the name of the bandit leader who carries a scimitar, and he always thought it was called scimitar, and so he named himself scimitar. Ah, uh, there's some little uh, musings for you. This next entry comes from the cantrip used by a druid. The wood of a club or quarterstaff you are holding is imbued with nature's power. For the duration, you can use your spellcasting ability instead of strength for the attack and damage rolls of melee attacks using that weapon. This spell is shillelagh. Shillelagh. It's a shillelagh. Now, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> There are multiple pronunciations of shillelagh. Shillelagh. In British English, shillelagh. I say shillelagh. But really, we should be asking the Irish. Ask an Irishman. Hey, Francis McCaffrey has a YouTube channel. Let's take advantage of that. When in Ireland, sometimes there's different dialects in different areas. There's different pronunciations. There's plenty of different accents. The word itself is been explained as being derived from the word uh, shillela, a tongued stick. Some people, they say, look, the term derived from Shilela, which is just referring to the type of wood, which would be an oak wood. How I would usually say it is Shilele. And I think that's the most common way that I hear it pronounced now. This next entry comes from the Monster Manual. It is a demon or supernatural entity in folklore as well, in female form that appears in dreams to seduce men, usually through sexual activity. I pronounce it succubus. Let's see if I'm right. Everyone on the succubus. Succubus. In British English, succubus. So that's, I think that's clear. Another monster from the old monster manual. A fearsome legendary dragon-like mythological hybrid from Provence in southern France. Described as having a lion-like head, a body protected by turtle-like carapace, six feet with bear-like claws and a scaly tail. Okay, so Gary Gygax or whomever really kicked it up a notch with the... um, version for Dungeons and Dragons, which is 15 meters tall and 70 feet long. This is like the, uh, what do you call it? What are those, what are those uh, bugs that uh, sleep for 17 years? Cicadas. This is like the cicada of the uh, D&D world because they slumber within the world's core. It comes out over only once in a while to just wreak destruction over the countryside. And I've been pronouncing this Tarask. Not Terrasque, not Tarasque. Let's check the old Dungeon Magazine. Tarask. Yep, I'm fairly confident it's Tarask. The French actually spell it a bit differently. They only have one R. And I think if you're a French person, you might say Tarask. The Tarask. French people, help me. All right, now we get to the old to hit armor class zero acronym. Is it Thaco? Is it Thaco? Does it matter? Does anyone care anymore? It's 2022. We're not using it. We haven't used it for like, what, 20-something years? Except for all the old grognards. God bless you. I feel like either is fine, considering the O is actually a zero and not an O. Uh, You probably don't want to say Thak Zero, though. So Thako, Thako, go for it. I'm not going to stop you. I surely will not. This undead creature from the Monster Manual comes from Old English. It's from an old Saxon word that means a uh, demon, basically. Uh, it's white, pronounced the same as the color or the absence of color. 
unless the absence of color is black and you think white is all the colors, but it's not. It's the other way around. It's it, uh, are you going reductive or adductive color theory. I personally always pronounced it wyvern for the old uh, draconic-like creature that uh, only has two legs and two wings instead of a uh, an actual dragon. See, the difference between the wyvern and the dragon is the dragon has four legs and two wings, but the wyvern has two wings and only uh, the two back legs, and that's why. And also in Dungeons & Dragons, the wyvern has the scorpion-like tail, the stinger at the end of the tail. I think I've heard wyvern, and the dragon article uh, backs that up. It says wyvern or wyvern is correct, but uh, all the pronunciations that I found online, Google, English pronunciations, YouTube channel, and so forth, uh, it's wyvern. Wyvern. In British English. Wyvern. And that's everything on my list. I hope you enjoyed. I'm sure I've forgotten something that you would have liked to have heard or seen. And you have every right to complain. So please do. It's Sarah from Adventure EXE. Why not tell your friends about Torn's Guide to Everything? If you have ideas for future episodes, questions, or just want to complain, well, you're going to have to go and like the Facebook page, subscribe to Torn Atkinson's YouTube channel, and tweet him at, at Thickets. And if you like this content, go to patreon.com slash Torn Atkinson and throw him a couple of your Earth dollars. Torn would love it. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the internet. I'm having a rough time.